All right, boys and girls, a new addition to the shack, to the goofing off with radios section of my life. Um, I'm gonna show you, is that anything? Good God, it doesn't even fit in the frame. Back down here. There we go. She's a big bitch. Uh, <laughs> this radio is an SDR, or a software-defined radio. Uh, it's kind of like the FPGAs, but for the radio world, where we, when it's, when it's built, aside from like the big chunks of uh, range that it's designed to uh, receive, uh, and to that extent also transmit, but you don't have to be too particular about it. The, the software, especially on the receive side, you basically pull in all of the frequencies and then you let the computer pick and choose which ones to focus on. Does that make sense? So where normally you'd have discrete components and you'd run it through a different filtering circuit to like weed out everything else and just list, let you listen to one frequency that you want to listen to. Um, I say frequencies, just like you know your FM dial if you're old enough to have actually like dialed it up or maybe you push some buttons, right? So you're pushing buttons on your, your radio, your, your FM dial, and you're trying to pick a frequency. Imagine that your radio, instead of moving to where it was at with its little window, it has this massive window and it can pull it all in at once and then let a computer pick and choose uh, which parts to kind of dial into. So you're actually receiving all of it. And you, you guys will see this later on today when we get this thing fired up. Um, they call it the waterfall. So it's a, it's a spectrum. It's the spread, a spread of the spectrum. And you're pulling all of it in and there's a graphical way of representing that. And so you'll actually be able to see all of the frequencies, <laughs> all of the information there at once. And then we will move a little slider around and pick it. So I did not know about the Flex radio uh, as, as it's manufactured by a company called Flex in, until maybe a year ago. And I heard somebody on the air that sounded amazing. And I was like, I've got to know what you're dealing with. And that's what a lot of folks that are, you know, ham radio guys, CB guys, if, if you hear somebody out there and they just sound choice, it's either their microphone, their antenna, their radio, all of the above, and you're trying to kind of suss out, like, do I need to upgrade in my antenna? Do I need to swap out this crappy stock mic with something with a little bit more range and some amplification to the mic itself to get the levels up? What you're trying to figure out what things, you, tunable, stuff you can control with your, your pocketbook and you know the knowledge you have about radios and equipment, what can you do to be the best at, you know, at the game? Um, we're just ha you know having an enjoyable time. It's no fun if no one can hear you or you, you know they're kind of you're breaking up and you're not sounding quite right. Um, it's it's less fun. It's more fun if you, you're dialed in and you got it going. So the you know the person that had the best audio I was talking to happened to be transmitting on one of these. Now the company has since discontinued this model and they've moved on uh, to newer ones. I'll throw a couple photos in here. Uh, I think the 6400 is what uh, like the six series. They here they're in the five. Before this they had one that was a little bit less. Or quite a lot less features, and it was called the 3000. And then I think they had a 1500 or a 1000 and all this. I only learned that recently uh, because I had to do a little bit of research for this one. I got this guy for a song. Um, it was like out of the back of, you know, the guy's RV, one is ham fest, they've got kind of like a um, tailgating area where, you know, they're not part of the main ham thing, they're kind of outside, people just kind of wheeling, dealing out of, their, out of the, the trunks of their car. It, this is another good reason you want to take some buddies with you. <laughs> if you're going to be going to one of these ham fests, or you're going to go flea market shopping and you have the things you're actually out to get, take some friends. I would not have seen this if it wasn't for my buddy 142, and uh, he has the same radio, and so of course it's top of mind. He's very intimate and, and understands exactly the way this thing looks, he probably spot it from a mile away. I did not. This gray, unassuming box, I think the guy had it up on his table, you know, kind of like this. And, you know, as I'm walking by, this is what you'd see. And like, it's not, you know, it's not gonna jump out at me as the, the thing. And I also, you know, mentally, I wasn't thinking of getting it uh, or, or getting one like it because it was just out of my, my price range. My understanding for this radio is it's, you know, in the thousands of dollars. And the one that is replaced, the, the lineup that's replaced this is that, They're, you know, this MSRP is, you know, it's like, uh, I think it's like three grand or more. You can definitely spend more. Um, but this one being discontinued, being used, and also having one major flaw, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, I got this for a deep, deep discount and um, ended up paying around $700 for it. So um, a steal in my opinion, but it comes with a microphone. And the biggest deal breaker 
which also likely kept this thing at the guy's table until my dumbass came along, was the fact that nobody else wanted to buy a radio that didn't have a power cord. Uh, taking this thing home, you weren't going to plug it right in and be off to the races. Not happening. So I said, well, you know, worst case, I take this thing apart and I desolder this connector and run my own little uh, pigtail off of here and go to an, an Anderson plug, depending on the, the amount of amperage it needs. Not a lot of amperage needed here because uh, this radio only puts out 100 watts. Um, and it's, it's intended, you know, for, for ham radios Ham radio, depending on your license, you can go into the, you know, thousand watt plus, but you need to have, you need to have the correct license for that, uh, full legal limit. Um, but this is meant to be kind of an exciter to then, you know, you can definitely use it as is, uh, or barefoot, um, as it's referred to, or you can bump up and connect it to an amplifier. So, uh, we're going to be running it barefoot today, dialing the power down a little bit, uh, to make it closer to, um, you know, some of the, the civilian radios, if you will. So, you know, again, I'm not scared of uh, a, a lack of a connector. And so when I got it home, that was the plan. I ended up just kind of jerry-rigging some pins that slipped over these and uh, was able to at least power it up and start communicating with it uh, and messing with the software. Again, this the another reason a lot of folks aren't just jumping on the SDR bandwagon is because these things are a pain in the dick. Uh, there's there's drivers that this thing communicates over firewire a lot of Mac or a lot of um, Windows machines don't have a firewire connector I've got a couple of Macs around here and I tried to run boot camp first uh, so that I can use my native firewire connector that I've got on um, on my Mac couldn't get boot camp going I, you know just like I'm pulling teeth to just get an OS installed on this Mac so that I can then th start to tackle these problems I said all right screw it I got the Firewire PCIe card that actually came with this. One of the few things it did come with, and I plugged that into an old gaming rig that I've got. E even then, getting an OS on, I had to mess with driver issues. I had to um, end up freshly installing uh, Windows 10, I think, after previously trying to do it on Windows 8 because that's the one I, you know, I've got a copy of that and a key for it. Didn't work, so go to Windows 10. Got the driver set up for this thing. Got the right software, which is now also not supported for um, from Flex. At least the old version of the software is no longer supported. Uh, they have a new one. I don't know if this is compatible with that. I'll play with that another time. Uh, but long story short, after a lot of headache and a lot of like gnashing of teeth, I got it up and running. Um, and so we'll we'll take a look at that today. So as it relates to this connector, I, the quickest thing is to go buy a used one on eBay. But these weren't super popular. They weren't shipping, you know, hundreds of thousands of these units because of how expensive they were at the time. And so the the connectors are not just all over the place. Um, there were zero on eBay at the time I looked. And so okay, if I can find, if I can get a part number off of this, I can do a lookup and see if there's a mating connector. And so it ended up being an amp connector. Here's the. Uh, I think it's like a Tyco amp. Maybe amp owns Tyco. They merged. I don't know. Uh, but I've seen amp before, uh, especially stamped on these things. I thought it was Molex. That kind of steered me off in a, the wrong direction for quite a while. Um, but no, it's a it's an amp connector. And I found the exact part number of the uh, interconnecting part that goes this way. So you have to order the plastic piece uh, that you actually make the interconnection with. And then separately... Uh, and th thank God for Digikey and, uh, and companies like them. They had a cross-reference, the ability to see oh, if you have this connector, oh, you know, you, you're going to want to use this uh, type of pin for it. And uh, so I ordered a bunch of these. Now, again, I only need one. Why did I order so many? Guys, if, if these are like 20 cents a piece. If, you, if, if you're going to make if you're going to make an order, order a bunch of them. You're going to have a buddy that breaks his, or you might want to fab one up to go in your car and just be sitting there ready to go or you might want to have one in a different part of your house and all you just move this thing over and click in so you want to have some options and at that price by the time you had to pay for shipping just buy 10 of the things and move on with your life so that's what we're going to do today let's build this cable up and uh, get rid of the jerry rigging that was going on before and actually um you know be able to run this thing at full power uh with properly gauged cables and uh we're going to go with uh, doubling up on the 14 gauge because there's four pins and uh, there'll be two for positive and two for negative which i think this is um, the same or bigger based on just some photos i've seen of what uh, flex ran originally so i think we should be pretty good there um, let's get at it oh boy ain't I'm a long way from home All right, if 
you're following along at home because you've got one of these flex older uh, discontinued flex radios uh, the 3000 5000 you're gonna want to make sure that you're orientating it in a way where all the outer side there's a convex and there's a flat side we're gonna put the flat side up and when it's up facing away from you so you're looking at where the pins are gonna be inserted the right the far right two are your positive leads. I'm not going to click them just yet, so I'm going to sneak in these ground negative wires, and then we're just going to shove them until they click. Normally, I'd be doing Anderson uh, Anderson connectors or power pull connectors, some people call them. Uh, I think Anderson was the brand that originally developed them. Um, there's a lot of different standards. There's some that have a little bit thicker gauge connectors uh, but for a wide range of amperages they share this same form factor so you can always go down an amperage um, on your devices as long as your supply is pretty high so you start with a high supply thick gauges then you can go down from there uh, for stuff you connect to it um, this would be my preference and i'll probably make another one of these with these on it the today it's more advantageous for the power supply that I've got back there to use the old school spade connectors and so that's what we're going to do today. Perfect. All right. That last step, not entirely necessary, but I really don't want to be guessing or looking for this thin stripe, this type. It's, it's, it's hard to get cable, you know, right now, at least, you know, the exact stuff I want. So you take what you can get. Um, at least it's got some kind of indication for polarity. I'm just trying to make it a little bit more obvious. Uh, so when you're back, you know, fumble fucking with the power supply, you're not guessing at it or trying to uh, be unsure of yourself. So let's get this thing plugged in and we can get that SDR on the air. And you can see over here, we've got a uh, separate, this is like, I think um, an AM uh, radio, or a shortwave radio station, I should say. Um, and this is another one that's not as strong. You see the difference here? Right? This one's kind of faint, you get little signals here, and then you've got something peeking in the middle, and then here, and that's the, that's the carrier, and then that's the information on the left and the right of it. Uh, and so at a glance, when you're looking at this thing, and we can stretch it out if you want more waterfall or less waterfall, like this thing is highly configurable tweaks the settings in here you can receive in goofy ways you can move this around you can widen it out if we if there's more data there we can go narrower we can go super wide it's just awesome let me, let me see if we can dial in this thing over here let's see what this radio station is over here on the left please grab this and slide it over Turn around and we saw what they had done there must have been a hundred of them having the body fun their heads stood high and they looked like creepy things we stood by general jesus and all began to sing our swords and the hair started falling. There wasn't quite as many All right. <laughs> All right. So some kind of like religious uh, channel. You know, that's another thing that's great about the radio is, you know, there's nobody that can stop you from doing it aside from coming around and, uh, you know, physically taking your equipment <laughs> from you. Um, there, you know, there's no license. I didn't, I'm not paying for this. I'm not um, subscribing to something. It's not a username or a password. You're just in like Flynn. If you can receive, you can get it. If you get the equipment, you can transmit, you can get your word out. Um, so that's what is that. You saw some of the colors change here to, um, you know, in indicate it's uh, these signals delta from this main signal. It's very, very strong. Um, and you can see this one's kind of fading back out again. Um, we can dial 10 back in. That's probably easier just to come here and just do 10. Bam. Anyway, so this is not a tutorial for, uh, this software is called uh, Power SDR. And 
um, th th that's not what we're doing here today, but um, maybe we'll go into it more in depth once I figure out how to use it. I'm not about to try and like uh, feign uh, being intelligent around you guys, but uh, there are a lot of knobs to turn in here. There's a lot of boxes to click or uncheck, and you know, it's just going to take me a good long time to figure it out um, and to get it dialed in for how I plan to use this thing for. Uh, but you can use this thing for um, you know monitoring uh, overseas stuff. I've listened to um, number stations. If you guys don't know what number stations is, it's um, different governments and, uh, and agencies transferring code amongst themselves but in plain text so like just like we heard this one and we can hear this one in, in an English voice it's called plain text there's no encryption and so I think there's whether it's agents in the field that need to know when to come back in or need to know when to uh, check in with somebody um, or simple messages to say yes the mission is a go or it's not they can transmit that out here where everyone can hear it but it's in a code okay um, I'll try and find some examples of it uh, for you here This is, there's just fascinating, fascinating stuff out there. Um, you can also, not this particular SDR, but there's some other ones with digital plugins so that you can decode a lot of your municipalities, police departments, uh, like your, your school district. Um, it's kind of uh, telling that the school district, the prisons, and the uh, police department are all on the same um, <laughs> radio equipment and frequencies and and they all share the same digital stuff L literally like the same system is is the same one for all of them and so uh once you get it dialed in you'll be able to listen to all of those um and they're they've been doing it long enough where they think that they're secure or encrypted they're not they're just digital so it means that yeah normals aren't listening to it but if you have just an interest in this stuff and you you know how to use computers and you can read uh, you can buy some really basic stuff and be listening to things we had some wildfires here not too long ago and i was able to get up to the minute not wait and see what the news tells me is going on uh or guess at how close something is in my house um, i was listening to fire brigade and the, the fire department name streets like we, the fire are fires crossing you know smith it is it's it's off of maine you know like what so you you knew or it's, oh, it's down by the quarry now like it's you know it's the flames are kissing the edge of the quarry like now you know um where it is moment to moment so um it's it's invaluable stuff you guys should definitely take a look at it so um yeah, that's sdrs in a nutshell and i'm super pleased to have one that can both receive and transmit so um Hope you guys have enjoyed tagging along on this installment of Julian's Random Projects. Um, be looking for those deals, man. If you guys found one and it was something simple like it needed a part and it got up and running or whatever, it doesn't have to be radios, let me know down in the comment section about the, the best deal that you came across um, and uh, why you got it at such a good deal. What was the quick fix for it? Uh, I love hearing those stories. Again, hope you guys have enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe if you guys want to have more of this and uh, tinker around with these things and look over my shoulder. Uh, Julian's Random Projects.